The question is that the bill be read in our second time. I'll call the member for use. Uh, thank you, um, Deputy Speaker. Pleased to rise to speak on the Customs Amendment, collecting tobacco duties at the Board of Bill. And it was very interesting to hear the member for Blair there giving us a lecture about budget surpluses, Deputy Speaker. Especially when we are coming up, Deputy Speaker, to the 30th anniversary and to when Labor last delivered a budget surplus. We have to go back all the way to 1989. That's right. The good member for Goldstein in front of me here wasn't bored. He was still running. He was probably still running around, maybe in primary school. I know the minister at the, the minister at the dispatch box. Uh, obviously, was a very may, may have been also maybe in primary school back then, 30 years ago. Is that correct? And of course, the member for Fenner over there. He was obviously giving these lectures back then, 30 years ago, telling us how wonderful the free market is, Deputy Speaker, before he decided to, uh, get his, to get his uh, insights into the Labor Party, Deputy Speaker, and realised that those ideas that he wrote so well about in so many of those publications no longer fit in to the modern-day Labor Party. And if he wanted to sit over there, Deputy Speaker, he had to disown all those rules. And then, of course, Deputy Speaker, the, we have to remember but they did get close. The member for Blair was right. They did get close. Who could remember? I can actually remember sitting in this chamber and having the then uh, Treasurer, the now member for Lilly, stand up and say, those four budget surpluses that we are announcing tonight, completely mythical, Deputy Speaker, completely mythical. And yet we have Labor members coming into the chamber trying to lecture this coalition on budget surpluses. We have done the hard work. The budget surplus is within, Deputy Speaker, is within months away of being achieved. Deputy Speaker. And then we have the long, hard haul back to try and pay down that debt that has been run up over recent years and which first started, Deputy Speaker, with that decision of the Australian public, unfortunate decision to elect the Rudd government when everything started to go pear-shaped. Now back to the specifics of the bill, Deputy Speaker. Years ago, when we had much higher levels of uh, import, import duty into this country, licensed bond stores were very common across a wide range of goods. And that was where an importer, when the goods actually entered the country, rather than paying the duty, whatever the rate was on that particular commodity, rather than paying that rate of duty up front to the Australian Customs uh, Agency, on the importation of goods, they would place those goods in a licensed bond store and they would defer the payment of th that duty until they actually took the goods out of that bond store. Now, over the years, as duties have come down, Deputy Speaker, across the economy, those bond stores are no longer as prevalent as they were many years ago in the past. But, of course, one area where they are still prevalent is in the area of uh, tobacco. So a tobacco importer would be able to import those goods. Rather than paying the excise and the duty at the time of importation, they would then go into a licensed bond store. Now, that licensed bond store, Deputy Speaker, has to have additional security, it's additional costs, it's additional paperwork. <coughs> Setting aside the additional capital required to pay that money out and the cost of the interest, Deputy Speaker, is far more efficient for that rate of duty to be paid upon importation. And there's also, Deputy Speaker, as the Black Economy Task Force pointed out, there is also the risk of goods disappearing from that bond store and entering into the market, Deputy Speaker, without that duty being paid. Therefore, I think I agree with this um, recommendation of the Black Economy Task Force that we close that possibility and we ensure that when tobacco goods are imported into this country, that that duty and that excise is paid at the time of importation. But, Deputy Speaker, in doing that, we are adding to the costs. We need to be upfront about this. We are adding to the costs of those companies that lawfully import tobacco products. Now, the problem that we have, Deputy Speaker, we are actually we've created in this nation by right attempts to decrease the rate of smoking, which I fully agree with, we've increased the price 
cigarettes. And in fact, Deputy Speaker, we've gone down a de facto route of prohibition by price. It's the problem that we have. You can buy a packet of cigarettes overseas, many markets in Southeast Asia, for around a dollar a packet. And they are lawfully made, Deputy Speaker. I can remember about uh, 12 months ago, I was going through a, a duty-free airport at Dubai. And I was just having a look of interest. I, I'm not a smoker, I don't buy cigarettes. Just of interest to see what the price of cigarettes were. And I could buy a packet of Benson and Hedges on special, I think it was about 30 in a carton, for the equivalent of $1.60 a packet, lawfully, from a retail establishment. So if we know the wholesale price is a dollar. So what we've done, Deputy Speaker, we've created this huge opportunity for black market operators in the space of illegal tobacco importation. So for every time that this parliament is going to put legislation in to increase the costs and to increase, increase the costs of lawfully sold tobacco, we have to admit that we are creating more opportunities and more incentives in the black market. And therefore, we need to ensure that we are adequately financing our law enforcement officials and our border protection agencies to crack down on illegal tobacco imports, Deputy Speaker. Otherwise, as has been proven many times throughout history, will you go down the track of prohibition? The unintended consequences cause more problems than what you're eventually trying to solve, Deputy Speaker. I'll leave my remarks there today on the issue of illicit tobacco. I'd like to note that I I'm a fervent anti-smoker. I'd like to see cigarettes completely abolished from the Australian landscape. But I understand, Deputy Speaker, you need to be very careful when you are trying to do that by a prohibition. We've got to continue to work on education programs because ultimately, Deputy Speaker, that is the only way to change habits. And we've got to continue to ensure that we give the resources to our law enforcement officials to crack down on illicit and illegal tobacco being sold, as it is, Deputy Speaker, across our nation in almost plague proportions at the moment. I thank the House.